Episode 13, Something More Precious Than the Life. Interesting title. What could that be, I wonder? Tanjiro is busy digging deep and giving himself the pep talk of all pep talks, finding his inner strength and value. <laughs> I mean, for all the non-heroism -hero of Zenitsu, he's taking care of this kid. He's doing good at root, despite all the complaining. And shifting. Again. <laughs> That's one way to get out. The world's saddest drum demon continues his assault. It's mildly irritating, his tactics. It's slightly preventing me from destroying him. It's got nothing on Ball Girl. Oh yeah, but this attack though. <laughs> I forgot about that. That uh, will destroy you. I like how this became a matter of convincing him that Tanjiro is great, instead of just decapitating him with the Sun Sword. Use both. That's interesting. I didn't expect that, but I kind of like that. Spirit alone is not enough. This is a demon who knows what he likes. He likes blood and spinning and property damage. <laughs> no one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> I feel like a kind word will disarm this demon completely. Like, listen buddy, Ka Kage was it? Kageshi? You've had a bad day. So have I. We've all had a day here. You know how much crying I had to put up with today? From my comrades? All these kids that don't listen to a damn thing I say? Now I gotta solve your weird Rubik's Cube house puzzle? Let's just call it a draw. And we can go our separate ways in peace. Flash. Hit me with that sympathy. Oof, no impact. This is the words of somebody with a grudge. This is not advice. Just complete overkill. The person almost seems to be relishing in his failure. Turns out he's pretty talented at the drum after all. He has the power of flash. Oh my god. <laughs> I now notice all the, the papers floating through the air. His failed writings. I feel like one of these attacks is more effective than the other. Yeah, that one. <laughs> You're writing, it's actually great. I've just read it while floating. <laughs> Hold on, he, he's saying he just figured out how to avoid aggravating his wounds by <laughs> stepping around Failure Demon's non-impactful manuscript. It's funny because I was fully expecting this episode to start with him having given himself this pep talk and just going on to annihilate this demon. But then the reflections continue to include the fact that that's not enough. Like, will alone, unfortunately, is not enough. Somehow this ends up being especially relevant <laughs> to me. It's actually sort of tough for me to think about this just because I feel like I play such a high priority on getting up every day and fighting for what I believe in, it's harder for me to admit when that's not going right. I think somewhere along the way, I internalize the idea that if things aren't going right or they aren't going the way I want them to yet, the key is to just like find some source of untapped energy and just bite down and push forward, you know? But maybe that's not always the answer, even if it comes from a good place. Maybe there are times when you need neutral jing, you know, and just let things be for a while and listen and take stock and not try to power through everything. I mean, Tanjiro exhibited a lot of patience in this scene. He's being flipped around, being assaulted with this guy's mediocre writing. Yet he's not blindly rushing forward, he's listening and waiting for his chance. It's interesting that that got added to this fight. It sort of made that reflection a little bit more multidimensional instead of just like, I know I can do it, you know, I can dig deep. It's like, I know I can do it, I'm gonna dig deep, but then also, how exactly am I gonna do it? Where's my opening. What's my moment? He's got a strong heart and a cool head. <laughs> Your slashes lack impact. They lack beauty and impact. Unlike this water slash that's about to decapitate you. Ah, let him go, Tanjiro. He's, he's, he's not going anywhere. Uh-oh. That's not a good sign for you, my friend. <laughs> this death thread. <laughs> sort of Sort of dark. You're a great guy. 
kill gay and then dead. There is human eyes. And then it all catches up to him. The pain. I feel bad for Kyoga. He never, like, got a chance for redemption. What did he do that was so bad? All he did was kill a bunch of children that we have no relationships with. I've seen worse. <laughs> That's true. He actually did him a great, a great kindness by saying that all he ever wanted was some recognition. Oh yeah, this quest. Two out of a hundred. Failure demon's blood was added to your inventory. Uh, oh, oh, nice. <laughs> Interesting. A little parcel service. He also has the site, the paper site. What kind of demon magic is this? <laughs> Thank you for explaining what demon magic that was. Yes. Revisiting this. This scene. I mean, I feel like he was working pretty hard to avoid it. It was your drumming that he complimented. But, you know, whatever makes you feel better in your final moments. <laughs> yeah. You had a real talent for mediocrity. Yeah, I feel like we've earned a day. We've earned a day of rest. But not if the birds have their way. He never breaks character with the kids. He always puts on a brave face for them. Oh yeah, poor dude. He's protecting... Oh, he's protecting... Kawaii Demon. You just earned major points. Major points! <laughs> yeah, see I feel like he starts off sort of irritating to then like flip it on the audience, do something endearing and heartwarming. But he never had to be fooled. They didn't land on their neck like the other guy. Yeah, I feel like characters like Zenitsu can get away with a lot because just weighing what happened, pretty much all the negatives you can point to are like his attitudes and him complaining. But then the positives are more action-based. Like, he did protect the kid. He escorted him the entire time, never giving up on him. A lesser person would have flung him at the demon that was pursuing them, got the kid out, defeated a demon with the most epic sleeping slash of all time, and then protected Nezuko. So, you know, how do you stay mad at him? It's really easy to put up with, let's call them, character idiosyncrasies. When you have enough time to observe someone and see that they come through for you often. That's how I feel, at least. Maybe he did land on his head or neck, after all. And that's why he got knocked out. <laughs> he has to fight more demon. When he says charging through, he makes good on that promise. With his head, no less. Dude is ripped though, just saying. Well, this is awkward. This I thought that was an amazing battle. Or he just literally put his body in front of the swords and didn't fight. It was a big leap of faith. He didn't even fight back. He has yet to fight at all without being asleep. Zenitsu's like, I heard you thought my character was annoying for the last three episodes. Let me pull at your heartstrings. He's open-minded and accepting. He really is the hearing version of Tanjiro. His ears are to him what Tanjiro's nose is to Tanjiro. <laughs> that face too. I feel like I'd rather have this skill than Tanjiro's smell skill. Hard on his sleeve, like I thought. Giving people the benefit of the doubt. I really like that. And then just pulling at the heartstrings some more as he gets beat brutally without fighting back. <laughs> He's a sweet kid. As if there ever was any doubt. I was actually thinking about something related to this recently. Where I feel like it's sort of difficult to have faith in others sometimes. Have you ever had the experience finding out something mind-blowing about other people? You know, like a secret that gets uncovered. And it's something you never would have imagined. That kind of thing shakes you to your foundation. Because you thought the world was one thing. But actually found out it's something very different. And then you start to wonder how many things are being hidden from me right now. From people that I think I know. Or that I trust. And that can be kind of a weird road to go down. And I think an important one, right? Because it's just sort of a truth 
that we'll never know the full story of anything. And to pretend like we do know everything creates this sort of vulnerable position. But there's also a trap in that, which is to go all the way into it and just become ultra suspicious and make not being duped this high priority, like no one's gonna get one over on me. You know, I can see what everyone's up to and becoming ultra suspicious. At the end of the day, one of the only tools that we have is faith. And it's hard to explain, but my feelings on this have sort of changed to the point where I think that sometimes that's enough, you know, just believing in someone creates a certain type of reality that is suitable for its purpose. If I want to believe in someone and I choose to have faith in someone, that can be strong enough or at least sufficient just for me to operate in a peaceful manner, even if I know on some level that I could be wrong. It's a choice that I'm making and I feel like as long as I'm not being delusional in that and that I understand that it's sort of a, a working choice or a working model, it can only benefit me. It's something of strength. It's a resilience of spirit and of heart. And if new information emerges that is disappointing, well, then I can adapt to that and I can incorporate that new information. But at least I haven't done anything wrong. You know, at least I gave people the benefit of the doubt and acted faithfully and honorably towards them. And so I increasingly feel like there's nothing to be ashamed about or worry about in placing faith in others and just believing in the best when there's no evidence of the worst. That I think is sort of what comes through watching the scene with this guy whose name I keep momentarily lapsing on. He doesn't really know Tanjiro, right? I mean, we know he's right, but he doesn't know that. But he's choosing to believe, and in doing so, he ends up likely saving Nezuko from annihilation, and his kindness will definitely be rewarded but is not going to be recognized or rewarded by a poor man. It's going to be pu punished. Wow, wow, that's a lot of punishment. Just when we thought we had a, a day off, we had a chance to relax. So then we got to fight our friends, our comrades. You can call him a lot of things, but he's not. Spineless. Loud? Yes. Sometimes irritating? Yes. Terrible with women? Yes. But he, he's not spineless. Oh, you just activated that eldest gene. Oh, he's gone to a dark land. So how we go from this to them being allies. This is a this is a lot. This is too much dedication to demon killing. Human slayer. Injuries be damned. Deep breaths be damned. Tanjiro epically flies at his human opponent while not holding his swords in hand. That's a, a fantastic idea. So I'm going to pat myself real hard on the back right now for not falling for that setup of being incredibly annoyed by Tenjutsu, only to feel bad about that when he's awesome in the end of this episode. Nope, I always saw it. I saw it from the beginning. One of the first things I said about him was he's going to have a lot of warmth. He's going to be really kind. He's going to wear his heart on his sleeve. And that's exactly what it turned out to be. And I feel like the character is probably only going to get better from here. Now it's time to work on Boreman, who just seems like a total dirtbag, ready to kill a human being and ally in order to destroy the kawaiiest demon of all time, despite the fact that she's probably in a deep sleep. So this was an interesting episode. It gave us sort of that double whammy of ending failure demon's pathetic existence, and then also somewhat redeeming Kenjutsu's pathetic existence. I really do feel a difference, even though we haven't like officially crewed up and hit the road, in the, the feeling and the atmosphere having these two other characters involved. I think once Boar Demon sort of gets on board and becomes an ally in like a Vegeta sort of way or a or Bakugo sort of way, maybe, although I feel like there's another character who's more similar to Bakugo. I feel like it's really going to start rolling. We're going to have a crew hitting the road with a lot of dynamism in the way we deal with demons. So I feel like the show is really, really picking up in a nice way.